Hello, dear servants. Welcome to Orientation. We couldn't be happier to have you as a part of this country's great working force. There are some things you should know about our values, what our vision is for you, how we run things, and why you must remember at all times, we are your God. And we are blessed to supply the lifeblood of this precious country, the land of the free and the home of the brave. You must never forget how privileged you are to be able to call this your home. Hundreds of years ago, your ancestors were told stories about the shining city on a hill, where echoes of come one, come all to our golden shores. Our gates are wide open and beckon to all of those who dream of a better life. We're heard around the world. Remember, only we can offer you the very best things in life. Why do you think thousands upon thousands of souls died crossing oceans and borders to reach our shores? Every time they hear the name America, they're reminded that the country they live in could never hope to be half the country that we are. Don't listen to the globalists in the media when they tell you that workers in other parts of the world are compensated fairly and have the ability to organize when needed. They have it too easy. An easy life breeds complacency. Complacency makes you lazy and weak. If you want compensation, you must work for it. If you want to be worth anything in life, grow a backbone and dig your hands through the dirt until they bleed. Maybe then we'll pit you enough to toss a few shillings your way. Why is it we've made so many advances in medicine, biotechnology, cybernetic implants, but kept it all to ourselves, you ask? <laughs> Doesn't it make it monstrous to see that millions of you are dying of a pandemic, a lack of medicine and food, exposure to the elements because you don't have a roof over your head? You need some perspective. You think we'll just hand all of these things to you? Oh, oh, you sweet summer child. You don't understand how reality works. Here's the thing, the way we operate is the way the natural order operates. There is a master, and there are those who are subservient to the master. We dictate the terms, and you agree to them. If you have an issue, well, you should be grateful. You're worth enough in our eyes to even have this opportunity. This is just the way things are. This is how they've always been. This is normal. If you want a better life, work for it. If you think you aren't being treated fairly, suck it up and stop complaining. You wouldn't want to lose everything, would you? That's not a threat. That's what you sign up for. Maybe read the terms and conditions next time instead of just saying yes. You can always just find another job. We'll miss using you. I mean, having you. But if you leave, you'll be endangering your own livelihood. Think about all of the bills and expenses that would bury you within weeks. Do you really want to be left at their mercy? And don't think we aren't aware of the presence of unions and those within our ranks who would rather turn against us and lose it all instead of doing what's smart and doing what you're told. It isn't in our best interests for you to interfere in the natural order of things. Our economic system, our glorious capitalism is the only one that works. Only we have lifted millions out of poverty. Only we are responsible for all of the wealth this country has accumulated. Look at the beautiful, strong, successful businesses that we helped build. This planet has been ravaged by natural disasters, war, famine, nuclear fallout. It is scarred, torched, and for the time being, a shell of its former self. But it's still alive. And we're the ones who have done all we can to ensure its survival and ours. None of this would have been possible if we'd allowed the unwelcome stench 
of traitors, socialists, these organizations who only seek to tear us down anywhere near us. You need to understand something. We will do whatever is necessary to prevent any disruption to the balance of things. We do not take kindly to those who seek to undermine us. We will not allow any provocation to go unpunished. During the Great Collapse, we were called <laughs> genocidal monsters, inhuman and evil for taking decisive action against factions of terrorists who would have threatened the lives of billions and sent us on an irreversible path to extinction. We did what had to be done. Those are the consequences of disobeying your masters. Thankfully for the past 100 years, your kind has been docile. You understood the risk of stepping out of line and did the right thing by knowing your place and taking it. You submit to us. You obey us. Only we- Hello. You don't know my name, but you don't need to. We've been trying to interrupt or jam their transmissions for months now, and even if it's for a moment, I'm talking to you, so... <laughs> Success. I don't know how long we'll be able to keep this from being overridden, so I'll cut to the chase. The bourgeois state and all of the authoritarians and dirty capitalists running it these people are not your friends. They are not to be trusted. This veneer they put up of all-encompassing power, militaristic might, control over every single industry and corner of society. It's just that. A facade. What lies behind that facade is an empire of lies, a festering pit of corruption, murdered the most vile hive of evil that's become nothing more than an infection on society. The way they abuse, exploit, endanger, or just outright kill those who are nothing more than a means to an end in their eyes, it's disgusting. And this has been the norm for hundreds of years now. It's just that now that they've secured such overwhelming power, they feel comfortable shedding the typical politician's persona and demanding blood. But the thing is, we should have seen this coming over a hundred years ago. When the Great Collapse happens in 2020, the worst pandemic in over a century was killing tens of thousands in a matter of months. And our social networks, infrastructure, ability to organize and fight back against the master-slave dynamic that we still haven't broken out of, even our way of life itself, it was all pushed to the breaking points and then the bottom fell out. There was an opportunity for revolutionaries at the time to rise up in mass and uproot the ugly, knotted roots of capitalism and authoritarianism. And it was the best opportunity we had had in over a century with how weakened the political institutions of the time had become. With one swing of the sickle, we could have severed ourselves from the parasitic beast that was killing us little by little, but we were too busy arguing about voting semantics, calling one another traitors, refusing to have just a little bit of perspective and empathy, and not seeing the common cause that we needed to be focused on. Not understanding that kowtowing to the rich meant stabbing workers and ordinary people in the back. It tore us apart. We built such tremendous momentum in the years leading up to this that it seemed all but inevitable that a true proletariat revolution was just beyond the reach of our fingertips. But we squandered it. The ruling class recognized how utterly broken we as socialists, organizers, freedom fighters had become. And they knew all it would take is a massive show of force to bury us. If they united in solidarity in a way we hadn't been able to, any and all attempts at resistance would be pointless. They could obliterate us in the blink of an eye and 
They did. We knew dark times were ahead when the two parties of the time merged into what they deemed the One Nation's Party. They eliminated all branches of government besides the executive. They did away with voting and representative democracy. And they burned the Constitution. Suddenly there were soldiers patrolling the streets, anti-socialist propaganda being broadcast on every station, and the command was given to kill on sight. They resurrected the gulags of ancient Russia. And within years, it was the 1920s all over again. But magnitudes worse than even the most grave nightmares our people could have dreamed up. The next hundred years were full of unimaginable horrors. Our people being hunted like dogs and shot in the streets, dragged by vehicles and strung up. They made a show out of punishing us. It's like we returned to medieval times where passerby cheered and raved when an innocent person's throat was... Non-compliance will result in your termination. The sooner you all stop letting these foolish ideas into your heads, the sooner you'll be able to share the same peace and prosperity as those who happily assimilate and give themselves to the ONP. They gave us no mercy. The full might of the One Nation's army was utilized. And if we weren't sent off to the chambers, we were being burned alive in our homes. Crimson Knox is what they call the peak of this murderous rampage, when within hours, parents, children, and people like myself, thousands of us were killed in the bloodiest night this movement has ever witnessed. My grandfather, one of the bravest people I ever had the pleasure of knowing, was killed when the ONA released swarms of hunter drones that were able to hunt down anyone the party wanted dead. These goggles. These goggles were his, and before he left on a scavenging party that he would never return from. I vividly remember him handing them to me and saying, these gave me sight when I needed it most, and I've done all I can to do the same for you. Promise me you'll remember. Clear eyes lead to a clear mind. He kissed me on the forehead, said goodbye, and um, that was it. And after my parents were killed in an air raid, he risks his life to leave his safe haven in San Francisco, cross through the vast stretches of the Outer Territories, and come here just so I'd still have a parental figure in my life. He, uh... He's the one who taught me about the uh, UWA, or the United Workers of America, the revolutionary underground, the words spoken by philosophers of the ancient past whom we still use as the guiding lights of our movements. He's the reason I'm here, and all I can do is just try to honor him and all of the work that he did for us, and hope that I can have half the golden heart that he did. Because of the times we're in, we've all lost someone dear to us. And it's a heavy burden we're all carrying, but we're trying to carry one another through somehow. But thankfully, once we sealed and settled into the bunkers that we now call our home, our incredible engineers made a breakthrough that gave us a little bit more light whenever we needed it most. So those of us considered a threat but not worthy of killing yet had these little skin tags, as we call them, injected into the back of our necks. They figured out how to hack into the tag's internal coding process, flip a few switches, and allow us to keep tabs on one another while becoming invisible to the OMP. Before this, we would try to scramble any and all tracking data so they couldn't find us, but nothing worked. No matter how much we hacked, intercepted, or tried to commandeer all of the bots and programs that they used to peer through the vast invisible ocean of radio waves and the internet. Over those terrible, terrible decades, they still found and killed 
all but a few hundred of us. And it, it forced us to abandon our homes on the surface and instead make a new home for ourselves underground. These massive bunkers had already been built to prepare for the more cataclysmic effects of climate change. And thankfully, through the incredibly brave work of military members who defected and chose to help us instead, we were able to reclaim seven of them as our own. If we show our face above ground, we'll be shot dead. But Miraculously, even without the breakthrough of the skin tags, we can't be traced here since we discovered loopholes in the ONP's surveillance network. It took years to figure out how, but we managed to exploit those loopholes and make ourselves invisible instead. All before they were able to find the last of us. So this is where we are now, and you whoever or wherever you are watching this. It, it probably feels like everything I'm saying to you right now is completely foreign. This is a history that you've never been taught, but what I'm telling you right now is the truth. Ideas are poison. They are a cancer. They make people feel as if they have some divine right to choose for themselves what they want to go against those who built the society they now live in. They make you naive, gullible, reckless, and dangerous. And we will not have that. The narrative crafted by the ONP was meticulously programmed to assuage all doubts and questions in your minds. They want you to feel that wrath and violence are just, that the killing of tens of thousands of innocent souls is justified when those souls made the unfortunate decision to question authority, to question what they're told, and to try to do something as radical as speak up. Our species is good at adapting, you know? We've somehow made it this far, and in these bunkers are some of the fiercest, most determined people I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. You can see it in their eyes when they talk about all of the research and building and testing they've been doing to prepare us for a different kind of revolution. The way things were done in 2020 is no longer possible for us. Protesting in the streets, building these mass movements of interconnected communities through tireless organization, and all the things people like Marx and Engels staked their lives on, it's over. Because of the mistakes we made a hundred years ago and the chance we blew at turning the tides when the opening was right there, we have to approach things differently now. We have to be covert. We have to learn how to use their tech against them. If necessary, we'll send squads out to steal implants, blueprints, weapons, whatever it is they're carrying in those convoys that rumble overhead constantly. And you know, We've spent years thinking that our last chance had been blown. That revolutions, even as a concept, were dead and gone, and we would forever be sentenced to a life living underneath the very land that we used to call ours. Wasting away in a coffin of our own making. We've watched our resources dwindle, and the thought has crossed all of our minds that they're only going to last so long. Which is why we're pushing so hard in this present moment to give it one last try before we truly reach our ends. Everyone who came before us, everyone who put their lives on the line for this cause, they'd want us to keep going until either every one of us was dead or we finally saw our vision become reality. And it's not just a race against the ONP. It's a race against time as Earth continues to crumble and collapse. This despicable excuse of a government ravaged the planet's environment to the point where the oceans are all but dead. The Amazon was wiped clean. Blue skies, snow, the sound and smell of crisp air blowing through the uh, tall green pines. It's gone.
the last remaining food chains and ecosystems. The only things that were barely holding us together. There was only so long they were going to survive with how aggressively the ONP demanded that every available resource be exploited and used up so they could stockpile as much as they could get their putrid fingers on, while the rest of us were forced to starve and breathe poisoned air. To watch our precious, beautiful home just wither. Helpless and unable to stop the apocalypse that we were being plunged into. It's the kind of soul-wrenching pain that no one should ever have to feel. But we feel it every single day. The world that exists above is all but a wasteland now. It's one of the few things we wish had remained a thing of fiction, but here we are. Here you are. Even though you're likely reeling from all of this, I want you to know first, you are not as alone as you feel. We've hidden ourselves from your view for our own safety, but we're here. We feel the same frustration that you feel. We have the same hunger for somehow, in some little way, setting off what will become the end of the ONP's murderous regime. All seems hopeless right now, but maybe, just maybe we'll make it out of this one. But in order for a future without the ONP to even be a possibility, you cannot give up hope. Whatever tools you have at your disposal, use them. Work diligently and stay out of the sight of the ONP's all-seeing eye and tell whomever you're able to that a small spark of hope is still alive. Either you fall in line or we cut the thread of life. This is a simple choice. Live honorably under us or die a traitor. There will be no further discussion. The most beautiful futures can arise from the most horrific trying times. And I've seen all of the tragedy, bloodshed, and setbacks we faced since before the days of the new American Union. I'm talking to you right now, which means we're still alive, which means that there is still hope. And if those we're communicating to above ground are able to build a strong enough shadow network of activists, former soldiers, and anyone willing to lay everything on the line, maybe we have to give this one last hurrah i've put too much of my own blood sweat and tears into this to just let my comrades be rounded up into a firing squad these people are my family and i will never abandon family if i die with them then we'll die together just like we fought together all of the odds are against us and that's why we must keep going. That's why you must remember that you possess so much more power and light and goodness than you realize that you are the voice that could set off a domino effect of awakenings, the forming of new revolutionary committees, and the dawn of a new era for us. For you. For everyone who has suffered too long under a regime that bleeds us dry and then tosses us aside. Comrades, we are with you. You are not alone. Spread our message. Keep this fire burning. And don't turn your eyes towards the night. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. And don't forget. All we have is now.